Hi everybody, there's trouble in paradise with the TR6. I made it all the way home and it quit on the way into the driveway. And that's a peril that happens to many of you British car owners out there. So I thought that I would take you through the steps to diagnose it. A car basically needs four things to run. You need to get fuel, you need air, you have to compress it and blow it up. And that's basically it. And so if you go through those steps, you can see if all of those things are happening in the engine. There's a few tests, there's a couple tools you'll need. But since this is something that happens from time to time, I thought it would be valuable so you can keep your car on the road. Let's take a look. Now I'm as guilty of this as the next person, especially if that next person is me, because I've done this more than once. First thing to do is to make sure that you actually have fuel in the car. You can take a look at the fuel gauge, but fuel gauges aren't really always something that you can trust. So pop the tank, pop the lid on the tank rather, check with the flashlight, and I can see plain as day there is at least half a tank in there. I know that's true also because I just filled it, so there's plenty of fuel. Let's move on to the next step. The next thing to check is to make sure that that fuel is actually making it all the way over to the carburetors. You really need to have one of these. It's a combination pressure, vacuum gauge. Uh, it could tell you a lot of things, but if you want to make sure the fuel is getting at least up to the carburetors, this is the next step that you want to check. All you really need to do is disconnect one of the flexible fuel lines somewhere, plug this in instead, tighten it down if it needs to be, and make sure that there's a reading. It's going to be different depending on what car you have, uh, but for most of the British cars that we have, a couple PSI is really all that you need out of that pump. So let's see if we can get that on the gauge. I'm just loosening both sides of this because it's easier if you can flex the hose out of the way by rotating it. Make sure you tighten one side back down. And plug in your gauge. Now if you have a primer lever on your fuel pump, all you have to do is go over and pump it a few times. Otherwise, just turn the key, crank the engine a few times, and then run back and see your pressure. That's just over 2 PSI, which for this car is fine, which means to me the fuel pump is working fine, it's getting all the way to the carburetors, we need to look elsewhere. Now that we know the fuel is getting where it's supposed to be, the next step is to make sure there's air. Unless there's some really big blockage uh, or you haven't changed your air filters in literally forever, you're probably getting some. Uh, so check to make sure there's nothing obvious, uh, but outside of that, you're probably getting air. After that, there's compression, and of course that's going to be a little bit more involved. We can run that test if we want to. Why don't we go ahead and skip to the ignition side, since that's where most problems end up anyway. What you really need is one of these timing lights. Now, if you happen to be on the road, there's other things that you can use. Uh, you could use a test light and kind of roughly time it using, using static timing. But if you happen to be at home, one of the best tools that you can have is a timing light. I'll tell you why. First of all, for tuning your engine, that's absolutely invaluable. Uh, but even if you just want to see if there is a spark, make sure the car is in neutral, crank the engine with the trigger down. If you saw flashing, you know that you're getting spark. Now, of course, it's always possible that it's a weak spark. It could be happening at the wrong time. Your fuel pressure could be changing as the engine heats up, there's vapor lock, there's all sorts of issues that you can have, but the basics are now checked. If you're still running points, you want to make sure that the gap is okay on those. The best way to do that is with a dwell meter. But if you don't have one of those, a set of feeler gauges will do the trick. I've detailed how to do this in another video, uh, but let me at least kind of go over the basics once again. Uh, this car is still running points, and so it's possible that there's a problem here. Disconnect the distributor cap. It 
sometimes it's easier if the rotor's out of the way. Now what you need is a set of feeler gauges. For almost every British car, uh, 15 thousandths is the right number, at least the ones in my experience. That's not always true, so check your shop manual, check the owner's manual may even tell you depending on the car. And what you want to do, assuming that it's in the car, is these are your points right here. You want to make sure that they're riding on the lobe of the cam. So what you do is put the car in gear. You need the points to be open before you can measure them. And that means having this right on the cam, right? So the best way to do this is get the car in gear. Now fourth gear usually works pretty well. Don't touch the key, but take the brake off. And if you just roll the car, hopefully you can see that. Just sort of rock it back and forth until you're on the lobe. I'd say that looks pretty good right there. Check your manual to make sure that you're using the right thickness field of gauge. For TR6, it's going to be 15,000, so it doesn't matter what year. And check the gap between the points. I think we found the problem. I'm not able to get the feeler gauge in. These need to be adjusted. To do that, you'll want a screwdriver. Loosen the screw, holding the points down. And then adjust it ever so slightly to either open or close it. until your feeler gauge just barely fits between the points without moving anything. Once you're happy with the setting, tighten it back down. And then it wouldn't be fun if it didn't move on you, so always double check it. Pretty happy with that setting. We should be good to go. Don't forget to put the rotor back on. Secure the cap. And go ahead and try and start the car. Remember to take it out of gear. God, I love that noise. Now, while it was down here, I did notice Maybe you can see it. There's a little bit of moisture right on the fuel pump. And so I suspect the fuel pump's leaking a little bit. As long as I'm in here under the hood, I'm going to be replacing that anyway. Uh, but generally, just look around. See if there's anything else on the engine that could use some work. Uh, you don't want to have things leaking. You don't want to have hoses off. You don't want, uh, well, you don't want anything that's predictable to suddenly go on you while you're driving. That's part of the maintenance of these cars. You just kind of have to make sure that everything's working and that it looks good. Other than that, I already have the fuel pump handy, so I'll be back on the road within an hour or so. That was it. If you still need to keep going through things, you want to check the timings on the right mark, uh, you want to make sure that your distributor's advancing, again, you can do this with the timing light. If you have a friend help you, or if you just rev the engine manually, get the timing, find out what mark you're on, and then rev the engine up a couple of thousand RPMs. You want to see that that timing mark is advancing. If it's not, then the advance mechanism is broken. That could be your running problem. If it's stumbling when you're stepping on the gas, you may have an issue with the dash pots just being low on oil. 99% uh, of the time, guys, it's not going to be the carburetors. 
please look elsewhere. Uh, don't go adjusting the carbs. You don't need to throw out the Strombergs. They work fine. But go through it one thing at a time. Just be logical about it. And as you can see, all it was in my case was just a set of points that kind of went out of adjustment. It's going to happen from time to time. If you put an electronic ignition on, you'll never have that problem again. So I hope this was helpful. If you've got questions, post them in the comments below. Please subscribe to this channel. Uh, you'll be able to see these videos as they come up. They really do apply to a large variety of British cars and a number of other European ones as well. Uh, so let me know if you've got questions. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.